Calaroga Shark Media. From Springfield, where imprisoned transgendered illegal aliens are eating your pet kitty, this is Ballot. Oh man, Trump was so bad last night that I heard Nancy Pelosi is having backroom calls to get him to drop out. We have a lot to unpack, so let's hit this. Well, folks, it looks like Trump's debate strategy was to go full silence of the lambs meets windmills of your mind. When Harris jabbed at his rallies being snooze fests, Trump decided to take us on a wild ride through his personal fever dream. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats, Trump ranted. They're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our county. Wow, Donald. I didn't realize we'd switched from a presidential debate to a pitch meeting for Haitian Hannibal the musical. Maybe next time, stick to the I have the best words routine. It's less chewy. When fact-checked by ABC's David Muir, who said there were no credible reports of pet eating in Springfield, Trump countered with the ironclad source of people on television. He added, People on television say my dog was taken and used for food. Well, if it's on TV, it must be true. I hear they're also reporting that the moon is made of cheese and that Trump's hair is 100% natural. Turns out, Trump's team had advised him to pivot to a tragic story about a young boy killed in a car accident. But our former president, being the maverick he is, decided to stick with his gut. Or in this case, other people's pets' guts. Trump managed to turn a debate into a B-movie horror plot, complete with immigrant cannibals and windmill monsters. Next debate... Maybe we should check if he's been binge-watching The Walking Dead beforehand. It might explain a lot. Trump's debate performance was less Make America Great Again and more Make America Scratch Its Head in Confusion Again. There was the line that launched a thousand memes. Now, she wants to do transgender operations on illegal aliens that are in prison. Ah yes, the classic political platform of gender-affirming care for incarcerated extraterrestrials. I guess E.T. is getting more than just a phone home these days. As one clever ex-user pointed out, this sounds like something straight out of a succession, Chiron. Trump's debate strategy seemed to be throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. Unfortunately for him, nothing stuck except the image of him as a confused old man yelling at clouds. The former president was firing off dog whistles so fast, even actual dogs were like, dude, slow down, we can't keep up. It's like he was playing some twisted version of Mad Libs. In City, they're eating the pets. The immigrants that came in, they're eating the other pets. Some enterprising souls have already started generating their own Trumpian anti-trans comments. My personal favorite, they're doing top surgery on stray cats in school libraries. Kamala Harris was the prosecutor who came prepared with receipts. Trump, meanwhile, seemed to think he was at a roast, but forgot to bring the jokes. Harris strutted across that stage like she owned it, offering Trump a handshake and her name. Trump's response? Have fun. Oh, Donald, if only you knew the fun she was about to have at your expense. Our former president spent the night playing defense as well as the Jets did Monday night. Harris laid out more traps than a Home Alone movie, and Trump stumbled into every single one. Trump tried to flex about his rallies, insisting, People don't leave my rallies. When it came to abortion, Trump danced around the issue like it was a subpoena. He declared, I have been a leader on fertilization. Um, considering your personal history, maybe that's not the flex you think it is, Don. Harris, meanwhile, hit him with that prosecutor energy. She called his stance on abortion insulting to the women of America. I haven't seen someone get burned that badly since, well, since Trump tried to look directly at a solar eclipse. The former president couldn't even hide his disdain for Harris. He yelled into the mic like it owed him money, while Harris just laughed it off. She warned that world leaders were laughing at Donald Trump. Join the club, world leaders. We've been doing that for years. By the end, Trump seemed to miss Biden so much, he was reminiscing about waking him up at 4 p.m. Buddy, I hate to break it to you, but as Harris pointed out, you're not running against Joe Biden, you're running against me. And run circles around him, she did. Trump's final assessment? It was the best debate I've ever had. Well, Donald, I guess when the bar is set lower than your approval ratings, it's easy to clear it. The debate aftermath gave us a show almost as entertaining as the main event. Our favorite orange-hued ringmaster, Donald Trump, decided to take a victory lap right into the media spin room. 
Because nothing says, I crushed it, like desperately telling everyone how great you were. Trump declared, it was the best debate I've ever had. Considering his last debate partner decided to quit politics altogether, that's like bragging about being the tallest Oompa Loompa. Not exactly a high bar there, Donnie. Our former president was immediately swarmed by cameras and phones. Finally, a crowd size he can be happy about. He stuck to his greatest hits, whining about ABC News and the moderators being unfair. I guess he was expecting them to ask him about his golf handicap and favorite fast food menu items. But here's where it gets juicy. Harris's team said she's ready for round two, asking if Trump is up for it. Suddenly, Mr. I Want All the Debates got cold feet faster than a MAGA supporter at a Taylor Swift concert. He said, I have to think about it. Translation, help, my ego can't take another beating. Trump even compared himself to a prize fighter, saying, when you're a prize fighter and you lose, you immediately want a new fight. Funny, I thought when you lose as a prize fighter, you immediately want new lawyers to contest the results and claim the ref was biased. But who cares about the issues? The big story is that Taylor Swift endorsed Kamala. Taylor, the queen of breakup songs, just broke up with any chance of a Trump presidency faster than you can say, we are never, ever getting back together. Swift decided to drop her endorsement like it was a surprise track at midnight. She posted a pic with her cat, Benjamin Button, because nothing says I'm making a serious political statement quite like cuddling with a furball named after a Brad Pitt movie. Our pop princess took a swipe at Trump's AI shenanigans, basically saying, look what you made me do, endorse your opponent. She signed off as childless cat lady, throwing more shade at J.D. Vance than a solar eclipse that Trump would stare right at. I hope no imprisoned transgendered illegal immigrants eat her cats. Swift encouraged her 283 million followers to do their research. That's right, Swifties. Time to trade in your friendship bracelets for voter registration cards. Swift wrote, I'm voting for Kamala Harris because she fights for the rights and causes I believe need a warrior to champion them. Warrior, huh? I guess Harris is ready for some bad blood with the GOP. Trump's team tried to shake it off, saying Swift's endorsement proves the Dems are the party of the wealthy elite. Right, because nothing says man of the people, quite like a guy who lives in a golden tower with his name on it. Harris's campaign, meanwhile, is all look what you made me do. Reposting Swift's endorsement with Kamala is ready for it. I bet Trump's wishing he could go back to December when he thought he had a chance. Trump's reaction to Swift's endorsement of Harris? I have no idea. Classic Trump. He's about as clueless about Swift's statement as he is about, well, most things. Meanwhile, Joe Biden, remember him? Don't worry, he doesn't either. Joe Biden plans to spend today doing 9-11. Um, Joe, I don't think that came out the way you think. Apparently, what he meant was, I'm going up to my granddaughter's birthday in New York. Whew. Well, folks, it looks like Elon Musk's brain took a little vacation during the Trump-Harris debate. Maybe he was busy counting his kids or planning his next trip to Mars. But as soon as Taylor Swift endorsed Harris with her new hit single, Childless Cat Lady Blues, Musk's thumb sprung into action faster than you can say electric car. Our favorite billionaire playboy decided to slide into Swift's DMs with the smoothest pickup line since Romeo and Juliet. Quote, Fine Taylor, you win. I will give you a child and guard your cats with my life. Wow, Elon, save some romance for the rest of us. I hear his next move is offering to build a hyperloop between his house and Swift's cat sanctuary. But wait, there's more. Musk, apparently realizing he hadn't quite dug himself a deep enough hole, decided to chime in on the debate itself. He claimed the ABC moderators were unfair to Trump, probably because they didn't ask about the structural integrity of Cybertruck windows or the colonization of Mars. So there you have it, folks. Elon Musk, tech genius, space explorer, and now apparently political analyst and fertility specialist. What can't this man do? Oh, right. Stay off Twitter. Portions of today's program were made with the help of transgender operations on illegal aliens that are in prison in AI.